y'all, and welcome back to another video. I'm Matt Shell, and this is Thousand Ant, where we give you Unity tutorials, devlogs, and indie game dev tips and advice. In this video, I wanna continue the discussion that we've been having on the channel around scriptable objects and using them to build architecture for your game. This has been a topic that a lot of people have been interested in. I've been getting some really interesting feedback from the comments about this as an approach. And what I wanted to share in this video is a free asset that I have actually added to my Untitled Cute Space Game project, which I'm finding is working really well for me and helping my productivity. So let's check it out. All right, so I've got my space game open here and the asset that I wanna to talk to you guys about is this scriptable object architecture, which is created by Everland Games. Daniel Everland is the guy who made it. And if you take a look at the asset store page, you can see that it has a overwhelming number of five-star reviews and you know, perhaps most importantly, it's free. So what this guy has done is he's basically taken the kind of concepts put forward by Richard Fine and Ryan Hippel about scriptable object game architecture in their respective Unite talks and built it into a clean, well set up package that implements a lot of the basic things that you're gonna want. So. One of the things that I did when I started off with this architecture is I grabbed the example code from Ryan Hipple's GitHub, which is a great starting point because it's simple and clear. But what I realized as I was going a little bit into the process was that, for example, I would wanna be able to raise events that passed variables, right? Primitive value types, like a string or an int or similar. And in Hipple's example code, that's not implemented, right? Obviously he was providing a simple example for a talk, it's not a full solution. And what Everland has done here is really kind of built that out and thought through some of the things that you're gonna need and added them. So the example I'm gonna show here is just really simple. It's using an int scriptable object variable that ties into the event system. And so the way that I'm using that, if we switch over here to my scene, I have this idea in the game of time passing between play sessions, right? Because my game is sort of an Animal Crossing-like. And so we have this refiner script that needs to roll forward the process of refining raw materials, like turning copper ore into copper bars, for example. And so I need to pass this system from my clock script how many seconds have passed since the player last started the game, right? Or when they saved, because you save when you shut down. So I have here this utility, which is a world clock, right? This keeps track of time in the game. And this has a reference to this asset, which is a int reference type asset. Now, what's cool about this is it's not just an asset storing this int value, but it also hooks into the event system. And this is the part that I really like. So if we take a look at the world clock, right, we have a reference to this int, and if we open up the script in Visual Studio, we'll see that we're using the scriptable object architecture namespace, which is nice, he's packaged everything up in a namespace, and we have a variable of the type int reference. And so basically, what we're doing is we're assigning a reference to this asset, and then, when it comes time to calculate the time since the last recorded time, right, which we're doing here in this method, once we're done calculating, we just assign to our int reference variable to its value, the seconds since the last session, which is an int, right? Now, we're assigning that there. Notice I'm not calling refiner update yourself or anything. I'm just changing the value, right? I'm just assigning the value in the asset. Now, if we look in Unity, the way that that value gets passed through to the refiner class, if we go to the resource system and we look at the refiner class, the refiner class has a reference to that int, and it also has this game event listener component attached to the game object, which has the refiner class, right? And via the Unity event here, I've dragged in a reference to the resource system game object, and I've selected on the refiner component, I wanna call tick forward since last play session, right? I wanna call that method. 
Now, I also have a reference to the int reference variable. If we look at the refiner script, what we can see is when we call tick forward since last session, we are gonna call this tick jobs method and pass in the value of the int reference. Now, I could probably also do this just by raising an event that passed that int as a value, right? That might be cleaner. I kind of like the fact that I then have this asset that I can reference in other places. I think that maybe helps for debugging to make it more visible. I'm also still just exploring this as a pattern and figuring out how I wanna use it, right? But I really like this. This prevents me from having to pull that value to check for a change, right? It's only gonna fire off this method when that value is updated. And so we're gonna call tick jobs, passing in the value that's needed, that's stored in the asset when that value changes, right? So I really like that a lot. That's just one example of how you can use this architecture but I really like the fact that I can assign this int reference right into the event field and the system is smart enough to know when that value changes, let's fire off an event and do something with that value, right? So if we take a look at the description for the scriptable object architecture, you can obviously grab it for free from the asset store. And then there's also a GitHub page where he lists off some of the features and there's a couple things that he's added here that I think are nice. He's got this kind of visual debugging gizmo system that will help you to visualize what's happening. I haven't really played with this yet, but I know that this is one of the things that during the discussion around this approach, people raised that I think this is there's a lack of transparency here. I'm not sure how I'm gonna debug this. I'm not sure how I'm gonna visualize the connections. So he's kind of made an attempt to address that here. We also have this nice, stack trace editor script where we can see on the game event the stack trace for what's happening when that event is raised right this is a nice i think addition to the kind of debugging tooling here custom icons right just nice kind of quality of life stuff and then this automatic script generation i haven't actually played around with this yet but i think it's a cool way to be able to generate the scriptable objects in a quick and easy way but I think that, you know, for the price, you can't beat it. And it's cool that he's posting the source on GitHub, right? It's an open source project. And I think that, you know, he's just doing a great community service here in having this kind of clean, fleshed out implementation of this pattern that people can just grab and play around with. Now, importantly, I know there are multiple people who have done implementations on this, although some of them are charging for it, right? This is free, which is a great attribute of it. I don't know if this is the best implementation. It's just the one that I've tried. You know, I had a moment of trying to decide, do I wanna kind of roll my own or try to re-implement some of this functionality myself? I initially started with the simple code from Brian Hipple's GitHub because that was kind of simple and clean and I could kind of get my head around it. But then I started to realize, oh, I need this and oh, I wanna be able to pass primitive types and oh, I wanna do this. And, and that was when I remembered that I had seen this asset and grabbed it and started to play with it. And I feel like that there's also something there about when to implement an asset with a bunch of code from somebody else into your project, right? It's probably not a good idea to do it until you know, yeah, I'm into this approach and I and I wanna do it, right? But, but when I kind of was like, yeah, I'm really enjoying this scriptable object-based approach, let me go and grab this guy's system. And so far, I've been having a really great time playing around with it. Now, as a kind of additional disclaimer, some of the feedback that I've been getting on the channel is people who say, oh, this approach won't scale onto a larger project. It's gonna be difficult to debug. I'm not gonna know where the kind of linkages are the way I would if they were kind of hard-coded into my code. I think those are all valid critiques. And I actually am thinking about, I feel like I need to gather more research and do do some further investigation, but it might be interesting to have a video on the channel talking about some of the drawbacks and weaknesses of this system. So if you have some input on that, I would love to hear 
in the comments down below. Where do you think this kind of architecture falls down? Have you tried it? Have you tried it on a bigger project? Did it fall apart on you? I think that as we talk about tools and approaches, right, we should be candid about, hey, this is the part that I like, which I'm sharing, but then let's also talk about the weaknesses, right, so people can make a informed decision about whether it's gonna work for their project or not. I'm not here to evangelize scriptable objects or start the church of scriptable objects or anything, right? Like, let's be clear-eyed about this is what's strong and fun about it, and this is maybe what where it might become a problem. So I'd like to continue to have that discussion with you all. So drop a comment down below if you have some input on that. And yeah, as always, if you're enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like on the video. It helps other people like you to discover the content via the YouTube algorithm, which we appreciate very much in making these videos. Thank you so much for being here, spending some time talking back via the comments. I find it really interesting. We've been having some really good conversations about this over on the Thousand Ant Discord. I'll drop the link to that in the description down below, as well as the link to this asset and some of the other things that I was talking about in the video. But as always, I really appreciate your spending a little bit of time with me and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time, bye.